I'm Tom Ray from the band Lorenzo's Music, and this is the Lorenzo's Music Podcast. This is a show about meeting musicians and creators and talking to them about what they do. I wanted to talk to people that have signed up to our mailing list or people that have used our music for their own projects or just people who I've heard about on the internet doing interesting things, things that I wanted to know more about. One of those people that I'm talking to today makes videos and music. I am Jacob Woodward. My day job is that I am a studio tech at a TV studio. The main thing I do on the side is YouTube videos. Jake is one of the people that contacted me from our email list. Now, how he heard about the band in the first place is kind of a funny story. I'm a really big fan of the like the 80s and 90s animated Garfield TV show. And I know what you're going to say. Uh, yeah, I see you nodding. <laughs> so you know that the voice actor for Garfield was Lorenzo Music. Yes. And so I, I think I had read and heard that he also had his own music that he made. And so I wanted to try to find it. I found your band. <laughs> that Okay, you that's know? a new one. And <laughs> the song that I found was, I think it's called We All Get Down. Uh, 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 all Fall Down, yeah. All Fall Down, that's it. Yeah, All Fall Down. And at first I thought it was convincing because it just started with a bass line. And, uh, <laughs> and then I started to hear more and more, but I was just like, I don't think this is Lorenzo music, but I really like this song. <laughs> My, my YouTube channel has been around for, I want to say over a decade now. I want to say maybe 11 years. I think I got started basically just because I saw people making stuff on there and I thought that would be fun. Yeah. And I already have an interest in, in media and especially digital media. Just kind of, and it's also just a really good creative outlet because, I mean, I'm sure at this point, anybody who has internet access has seen either a really funny YouTube video or an extremely creative YouTube video. Right. And that can, you know, for certain people that can spark something in them to want to emulate that and then eventually find their own style. This year so far of 2018, I've been doing sort of a project where I try to really stick to making uh, one YouTube video every month because my, my upload schedule for a long time has been very inconsistent. Sometimes I could drop two videos in a month and then not put something out for half a year. That mm-hmm. definitely happened just last year. A couple of years ago, I made a New Year's resolution to do it every month, but I'm finally getting to it this year. Yeah, New Year's <laughs> resolutions, they're such horrible, they're great and horrible things all at the same time. Because it always yeah. is like, because then you feel awful if you don't do it. Yeah, uh. <laughs> until you forget about it completely. Right, exactly. <laughs> but it's been, it's been a really cool project because it is, I don't necessarily want to say forcing, but it is making me think creatively more often and like really get into the writing and the voiceover, the recording, the editing and making sure I'm staying consistent with it and trying to learn how to do things in a new and fun and interesting way. That was one of the big reasons that I did the album uh, review because I've for a long, long time, I've wanted to do album reviews in some way, but the biggest hurdle that I had to overcome was how do I talk about something that is purely audio put it on YouTube and make it visually engaging. Mm -hmm. And so I think with the the video that I made, which if the listeners want to check it out, it's a, it's a video called Del Rio review. It's for a artist named Armin J. I got excited because he tweeted me back after he watched the video and he said, really, yeah, he, he thanked me for making it and and for me digging deep into it. Oh, that's really cool. That was really validating. I have a friend who's also a YouTuber named Ace Waters, mm-hmm. who uses Twitch to, he'll, he'll stream just live jam sessions of him going to town on all, all, his, all of his synths. Oh, wow. Uh, he, he's a synth-based musician who makes, I don't know how he does it, he makes weekly covers of video video game music or nerd geek culture music or really? just, sometimes even just general covers and he does it weekly the edit the videos are edited really well the, you know this person from the internet or you actually know them personally i know them personally now but we've he and i first met through youtube he sent me a message after looking at one of my covers and he had said that he had always for for his covers he had always wanted live acoustic drums instead of 
I mean, he he does he does like synth percussion a lot of time, but sometimes he'll call me in to record drums for him. What do you mean by synth percussion? Like using like a Tempest drum pad or stuff like that. It's not played with a keyboard. You're just saying it's like a MIDI controlled drum sound or. Yeah, that one is it, it's got little different pads that you can program different sounds to and you tap it and it makes different sounds. OK, but he's gotcha. got like a bunch of keyboards, too. So. Yeah. Yeah. OK. <laughs> so he's really cool because he's he's not just synth or electronica he he's what we could just we can call it here now we can mix it and call it folk electronica because he also plays guitar he plays saxophone i don't know if i've heard of folk electronica that's a new one to me okay yeah he's a really cool like multi-instrumentalist and i i admire him in a lot of really cool instrumental musical ways and he just reached out to you or how did you guys actually connect yeah he just he reached out to me through a message on youtube he said hey do you want to collaborate sometime and I always want to collaborate musically and I don't get to do it enough. That's cool. We grew a friendship out of collaborating and I met him a few times uh, in in real life because he lives on the other side of the nation in Oregon. (laughs) Oh, I love that. I love everything about that. So how do you guys actually collaborate? Now, that's the biggest thing. I've met musicians. There are tons of musicians I've met that like I'll never be in the same room with. But the actual collaboration, like I'd love to work with them and passing files back and forth and how you're going to do it. Like, how did you guys decide to handle the collaboration you did? So usually how it happens is he'll get a scratch track ready and he'll he'll usually include in that scratch track. He'll use his Tempest drum pad to mm-hmm. sort of like make a basic beat to to like kind of give me an idea of what he's looking for. I'll listen to the scratch track like over and over and over, and then I'll listen to it while I'm playing on drums to try to get something fleshed out. And then eventually, once I really have something, I'll record it and I'll send it to him. What digital workstation are you using for the recording? I use a it's a Zoom multi-track R16. It's a standalone. Do you really? <laughs> we just discovered... Oh my... God, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that jump back look right there. <laughs> yeah, I smile smiling. I was just like, oh, I said a good No, thing. literally just had a conversation about that thing like three days ago with the guys in my band. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Okay. Tell me about this thing. Tell me how you use that because that's fascinating because we're sitting there going like, is this something we should give a try? So I, I really love it because yeah. it's, got, it's got multiple inputs for xlr and for just line in as well it's it's in, it's in the same input area you record everything to an sd card that you just put into the side you've got gain controls for everything and i think you have panning controls as well okay it's it's an interesting thing when you have to like mix your own drums live because like usually what i'll do is like i'll do a little test recording and i'll listen to each key component and be like okay this needs to be turned up a little bit this needs to be turned down a little bit and then once i generally have the sound that i want whether it's a general case or whether it's specific for the song, then I'll just let it roll. I'll start, I'll record and I'll just start playing. And usually I'll record a few different takes where, especially for the drum covers on my channel, the way I do that is I usually record between three and four takes at the same time that I'm also recording the video angles. Cause I record, I do, I do a playthrough of the song three to four times and I'm very tired afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I was curious about that on your drumming videos. I didn't know if you just had the cameras set up and you had them all run at the same time and you edited them later, or you actually are saying you move the stuff around and then do another take. I move it all around. I have one camera and I just... Uh, I oh yeah, that's right. Because cameras are freaking expensive. You can't just be buying cameras so you can do a drum video. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the 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 Zoom Multitrack R16, I, it is a godsend. I okay. love that thing so much. All right. And, I mean, like, it, it's just so convenient that it records to an SD card and then you pop it into your laptop or your computer. You put the files on there and then you can just mix them and edit them in any way you want right after and that. And the files are separated by channel? Yes. Okay. You don't even understand how much we were like going, is this a good idea? Should we get one? Um, what prompted you to get it? My friend who was a guitarist had one before I got one and I, I loved it being able to use it because he would let me borrow it sometimes to record drums and stuff like that. And so once I saved up enough money, I was able to get one of my own and it's just been awesome ever since. Oh, that's so cool. I can't believe that you're, I can't believe the coincidence of that. That's so funny. (laughs) Oh my God. So what do you think about the, uh, concept of using music and videos as a musician and a person that does videos 
What's your standpoint on should we or should we not be able to use music and videos? I tend to be a, a person who tries to listen to both sides of an argument and then try to find something in the middle ground that I feel is true. So I totally understand why artists would not want their video or their music just used in random videos because mm-hmm. it might not reflect what the song is trying to say. They might have a certain artistic expression that they don't want associated with something. Mm-hmm. Like, like I don't think like dream theater would want one of their songs just in some seven-year-old kids minecraft video (laughs) (laughs) why not though i mean i I think that would be kind of cool to actually see dream theater in one of those (laughs) uh so i mean like i understand and i sympathize with artists who want to keep the pristine cleanness of a song into just audio and then like maybe trying to work out something where where somebody can use it in an appropriate sense but I also believe in transformative work. And I think even some of the silliest stuff that's on YouTube that like will take a song and edit it into a crazy new fun way, that's that's transformative to me. And I think you essentially get a new piece of art with that. And so with and so with the whole thing with using music in videos on YouTube, unfortunately there's a lot of landmines that come with that because of copyright stuff and yeah. the way that YouTube handles copyright stuff, which if you've heard anything about how they do it, it's not good. <laughs> no, I've, I've had to deal with it quite a bit. And, and also, like I said before, releasing stuff under creative commons, it doesn't make it a lot easier in the sense that other people, because your stuff is under creative commons will then go around and claim that it's theirs. So like, I actually, yeah, isn't that yeah. like, I literally had to do a claim ID with, you know, where it would do the fingerprint and tell people like, Hey, you're using this song because there was a, some company in Korea that was going around, like going, you owe us this amount of money for using this song. And it's like, that's not their song. And so I had to do the content ID. And then as people came to me and said, I thought this was free, I'd go, well, here, I will whitelist you. I have that ability, but most people won't check with you. They'll just use the song. The argument as well is, I mean, people could also buy the copyright for it and you have no control over what they use it in. I mean, I doubt that the pretenders really wanted that whatever that song about Ohio that they wrote to be the theme for the Rush Limbaugh show for the past 20 years. But he just paid for the rights to it and now he uses it and it's his theme song. So it it can happen either way. Like with Creative Commons, you can at least go, you have to share it under the same license. So if somebody like that did it, then you could also go, oh, good, it's under the same license. So now I can do a remix of what you made and put my own spin on it. So there's there's stuff like that. But no, the entire thing is a landmine. I was just curious what you thought of the concept altogether. To go off what you were were saying earlier, actually, I have a drum cover where I did the song Aquatic Ambience, which is a song from Donkey Kong Country. The video got a claim. I mean, the video didn't like get a strike or anything, but it got a claim from some... I don't know what group it was, but some group that was claiming that Aquatic Ambience was their song. I was like, no, that's the property of Nintendo, my friend. Yeah. But but I'm a really small channel. I have like no power and I don't want to dispute anything. And I'm like, I'm not getting any money from this anyway. So whatever. I have used music from, there's a band that it's one of my favorite bands called Falling Up. Um, I've used some of their music, especially some of their instrumental stuff. Uh, in some videos, there's a remixer on YouTube that I love called Lil Tommy J. I use, and I, since I support him on Patreon, I have access to his instrumental work, his instrumentals of each song that he remixes as well. Okay. And I often use that music in my videos as just background music that I think fits whatever video I'm doing. I try, I, I try not to use straight up like copyrighted music too much. One thing that has caused me to sort of get a little bit more lenient on that is YouTube's fairly recent change in how the partner program works because it used to be a partner but since i don't have enough views and subscribers i was taken away from it which again i wasn't making any money so no skin off my back and i actually feel kind of more free now because i'm just like okay i can kind of just do whatever i want now and not feel pressured to have to like fit a certain trend you don't have to worry about like oh is big brother youtube gonna take away my check for this because i did something bad you can just be like you don't owe me anymore. I do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to get my $10 check at the end of the year. Uh, <laughs> and, and also you, you said you supported somebody on Patreon. I've actually, so I know people who use Patreon, but I think you're the first person I've met that actually su- 
support someone on Patreon? That's something I've always wanted to ask. What made you finally decide to go, yeah, I want to support this person? So actually, bringing it back again, uh, the very first person I supported on Patreon was my friend Ace. Huh. Because he's he's a really dear friend of mine, and I, I want to support him in any way I can, whether it's through drumming or whether it's financially through Patreon. So he was the very first person I supported because he's a friend of mine. And then... I, I started branching out towards either other friends or people, especially people just on YouTube that I respect creatively a lot, like Lil Tommy J. Mm -hmm. I don't personally know him, but I have had a few interactions with him on Twitter and through an email. I will admit, sometimes I do support a content creator just because of the fact that they give a really good reward in their in their tier list. I also do it just to support friends and because of the fact that I can. Mm -hmm. one, of my, one of my things I want to do, especially hopefully through my YouTube videos is I want to be able to encourage and help people in any sort of way that I can, whether it's, you know, just cheering them up for a minute or with friends, if I can help them emotionally, financially, things like that. If I can help somebody, then that makes me happy. I want to ask you, what's the name of that actor that's on your wall? I've been looking at that the whole time and I forget his name. I want to say Gary Sinise. That's it, Garrison. Okay, so that's uh, been fun to see that in the background this whole time. That's and the reason that's there is because I'm actually I'm working with a local crew of friends for uh, a documentary for a local veteran, and through through the veterans outreach and some of the stuff he's done, well, he, he's he's tied in with a representative of a veterans association that Gary Sinise, I think he started it, or at least he's a very big proponent of it. And so all, all of us on the crew got signed pictures with nice messages on the pictures like saying thank you for your work on this documentary. Wow. Is it something you're working on currently or you've finished it? It's something I'm we're, we're, that we're working on currently. How did you get involved in that? So it was a friend of mine who I went to film school with. Who, he knew this guy who was going to a local trade college around here through another party. And this veteran had, he'd always wanted to have his, his story told. He, he had written a book before, but basically his story is that he was in the army. He had a very bad accident and through through a combination of some really good treatment and most importantly, uh, the service dogs in his life, he was able to turn around and become a much more positive person, hmm. pretty much get a lot of his life back and advocate for veterans and for service animals and things like that. And so we're, we're trying to tell his story and show just the, the really heartfelt beauty of the relationship between like man and dog. Yeah, and especially in in such a specific case of service dogs. But I'm really Thank happy you. that I you. asked about that <laughs> that Gary Sinise picture. Otherwise, I don't know if I would have known that. I really appreciate bands and artists who who give out their music either royalty free or Creative Commons because I think it's. Especially with Creative Commons, I, th I think it's just, so, or just in any case, it's so important to credit the creators so that, one, you don't have a million people in the comments saying, what's this song? Where is it from? Who made it? Like, <laughs> like, like, here it is. Look it up yourself. Um, <laughs> I get that. But, like, you know, but more importantly, people who make any art, and especially any really great art, deserve the credit of at least, you know, having their name known, even for that brief 15 seconds or a minute or whatever. I think it's really great when artists are able to put their stuff out there, royalty free or creative commons mm -hmm. to be able to help other artists and sort of crowdsource and crowdfund this bigger thing that they can be a part of. I thought it was really cool that you just wanted to make a podcast talking to just general, you know, musicians and artists and creators and stuff like that to, as what I saw was like get a discussion going about, what drives people, what's their passion, yeah. and what do they like to do, and just what kind of people are these people. If you'd like to check out Jake's videos, just search YouTube for Rock the Jake. And don't forget to subscribe to this show at lorenzosmusic.com, where you can download all of our music and use it for free. On the next episode... I'll be talking to someone who is part of a new music app that actually started right here in my city of Madison, Wisconsin. Thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you later.